a boyar was a member of the highest rank of the feudal Bulgarian, Muscovian, Kivan Russian, Wallachian, and Moldavian aristocracies, second only to the ruling princes, from the 10th century to the 17th century. The rank has lived on as a surname in Russia and Romania, and also in Finland, where it is spelled Pajari. Etymology, also known as Bolyor, the word's various names in other languages include Bulgarian, th plus or minus th three quarters th nn euro or th plus or minus th three quarters th nn euro th th one half. Ukrainian, th plus or minus n florum th to the first or th plus or minus th three quarters nn euro th th one half. Russian, th plus or minus th three quarters nn euro th th one half. Tiaboyerin. IPA, BE JARI squared EN. Romanian, Boyer, IPA, Boa. And Greek, I squared I I cubed I to the first I I I. The word is likely derived from the plural form of the Bulgarian title Boila, Bolaya, which is attested in Bulgar inscriptions and rendered as Boilates or Boliades in the Greek of Byzantine documents. Multiple different derivation theories of the word have been suggested by scholars and linguists, such as it having possible roots from Old Turkic, by undercurrency R. Another possible etymology of the term it may come from the Romanian word boy. A rich man is an owner of bulls or boyer. The title entered Old Russian as th plus or minus n thn. Boyars in Bulgaria, the oldest Slavic form of Bora Euro Bolomarin, pl. Bulgaria Euro dates from the 10th century, and it is found in Bulgaria, where it may have stemmed from the old Bulgar title Boila, which denoted a high aristocratic status among the Bulgars. It was probably transformed through Boila or Bolior to Bolior and Bolerin. In support of this hypothesis is the 10th century diplomatic protocol of the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII, where the Bulgarian nobles are called Belyades, while the 9th century Bulgar sources call them Boila. A member of the nobility during the First Bulgarian Empire was called a boiler, while in the Second Bulgarian Empire, the corresponding title became Bolya or Bolerin. Bolyor, as well as its predecessor, Boiler, was a hereditary title. The Bulgarian Bolyars were divided into Veliki and Mulki. Presently in Bulgaria, the word Bolyari is used as a nickname for the inhabitants of Veliko Tarnovo Euro once the capital of the Second Bulgarian Empire. Boyars in Serbia, in medieval Serbia, the rank of the Boyars was equivalent to the rank of the Baron. Meaning free warrior, it was the first rank after the non-free peasants or serfs. The etymology of the term comes from the word battle. The Boyars of Serbia were literally men for the battle, or the warrior class, in contrast to the peasants. They could own land but were obliged to defend it and fight for the king. With the rule of the Ottoman Empire after 1450, the Ottoman as well as the Austro-Hungarian terms exchanged the Serbian one. Today, it is an archaic term representing the aristocracy. Boyars in the lands of Kivan Rus. Boyars wielded considerable power through their military support of the Kivan princes. Power and prestige of many of them, however, soon came to depend almost completely on service to the state family history of service and, to a lesser extent, land ownership. Ukrainian and Russian boyars were visually very similar to knights, but after the Mongol invasion, their cultural links were mostly lost. The boyars occupied the highest state offices and, through a council, advised the Grand Duke. They received extensive grants of land and, as members of the boyars Duma, were the major legislators of Kivan Rus. After the Mongol invasion in the 13th century, the boyars from central and southern parts of Kivan Rus were incorporated into Lithuanian and Polish nobility. In the 16th and 17th centuries, many of those Ukrainian boyars who failed to get the status of a nobleman actively participated in the formation of the Cossack army, based in the south of modern Ukraine. Boyars in Muscovy In Moscow in the 14th and 15th centuries, the boyars retained their influence. However, as the Nyases of Muscovy consolidated their power, the influence of the Boyars was gradually eroded, particularly under Ivan III and Ivan IV. Tsar Ivan IV Ivan the Terrible severely restricted the Boyars' powers during the 16th century. 
their ancient right to leave the service of one prince for another was curtailed, as was their right to hold land without giving obligatory service to the Tsar. The Boyardumal expanded from around 30 people to around 100 in the 17th century and was finally abolished by Tsar Peter the Great in 1711 in his extensive reforms of government and administration. Boyars in Wallachia and Moldavia In the Carpathian regions inhabited by Romanians, the Boyar class emerged from the chiefs or Jude in the areas north of the Danube and Shenik south of the river, of rural communities in the early Middle Ages, initially elected, who later made their judicial and administrative attributions hereditary and gradually expanded them upon other communities. After the appearance of more advanced political structures in the area, their privileged status had to be confirmed by the central power which used this prerogative to include in the Boyar class individuals that distinguished themselves in the military or civilian functions they performed. Equals the Boyar condition equals, the Romanian social hierarchy was composed of Boyar, Mazil, and Ralph Lawrence U. Being a Boyar implied three things, being a landowner, having serfs, and having a military and or administrative function. A Boyar could have a state function and or a court function. These functions were called trigger florentori, or boyery. Only the prince had the power to assign a boyery. Landowners with serfs but no function were categorized as mazil but were still considered to be of noble origin. Small landowners who possessed a domain without distinction or serfs were called ra florenzelli. According to some historians, they were descendants of mazil landowners. Equals origin equals Although functions could only be accorded by the prince and were not hereditary, land possession was hereditary. The prince could give land to somebody but could not take it from its possessor except for serious reasons such as treason. Therefore, there were two kinds of boyars, those whose ancestors, as chiefs of the ancient rural communities, had held land before the formation of the feudal states, such that the prince merely confirmed their pre-existing status as landowners and those who acquired their domain from a princely donation or who had inherited it from an ancestor who acquired it through such a donation. During the Feynariat Ra copyright time, there were also boyars who had no land at all, but only a function. This way, the number of boyars could be increased, by selling functions to those who could afford them. Equals hierarchy equals the close alliance between the Boyar condition and the military administrative functions led to a confusion, aggravated by the Feynariats. These functions began to be considered as noble titles, like in the Occident. In fact, this was not at all the case. Traditionally, the Boyars were organized in three states, Boyars of the first state, of the second state and of the third state. For example, there was a first or a grand postelnik, a second postelnik, and a third postelnik, each one with his different obligations and rights. The difference of condition was visible even in the vestimentation or physical aspect. Only the boyars of the first state had the right, for example, to grow a beard, the rest being entitled only to a moustache. Within the class of the boyars of the first state, there was the subclass of the grand boyars. Those were great landowners who also had some very high functions such as the function of Great Vornik. Above those grand boyars was only the prince. Equals the prince equals, usually a prince was a boyar before his election or appointment as prince, but this was not an absolute condition. Initially, only princely descendants could be elected princes. During the Feynariat Epoch, however, any man could be a prince if appointed by the sultan. During the Ottoman suzerainty, and especially during the Feynariat Ra copyright time, the title of prince became an administrative function within the imperial Ottoman hierarchy, and thus the ultimate form of boyardness. The title of prince of Wallachia or Moldavia was equivalent in dignity to that of a pasha with two horse tails. Cultural references Norwegian composer Johan Halvorsen wrote a march entitled Boerens Eintogsmarsch, known in Norway as the signal tune for the radio program and Skekon Certain. Edward Grieg arranged it for solo piano. August Strindberg requests that this piece be played during his play The Dance of Death, Part 1. See also, Magnet, Okolnishi, Russian Nobility, Slutter. References External links, Yaroslav Padok, 
Andrea Yekurvliv, Boyars in the Encyclopedia of Ukraine, Volume 1. Wallachian and Moldavian Noblemen.